Today we're going to take a look at something that I've been asked about several times and a lot of customers seem to struggle with, and that's effectively reporting on CRM activities in Power BI. Now, if you're saying, I don't use activities in CRM, you may want to stick around anyway to understand some of the benefits this important feature can provide. When talking to customers about their business outcomes, so what are they trying to achieve by buying CRM, they'll often talk about increasing revenue with their existing customers. This often translates to connecting with those customers more often, which can mean increased site visits, for example. So how are we going to measure our progress towards this business outcome? By making sure the users are recording site visits. Activities now become a key metric for the organisation to not only measure whether they have achieved user adoption with their CRM initiative, but also how they are performing against one of their main objectives. So before we jump into Power BI Desktop, what kind of information do we want to see for activities? Typically, we'll want to see the number of activities a salesperson has completed within a specific time frame, whether it's phone calls, tasks or appointments. Maybe we'd like to see that by activity type so that we can see whether some users are capturing phone calls, but maybe not capturing appointments. Maybe we'd like to see how many activities have been completed by each salesperson across each entity. That way we can make sure everybody's focusing on all areas of the business. For example, following up on leads as well as existing customers. Okay, so there is an entity for each activity type in CRM, as well, of course, for any custom activities you may have created. There's also the entities that you link to an activity via the regarding field, accounts, opportunities, leads, and so on. We always recommend using the regarding field to link activities to the primary record. There's also one very important entity that we need, and that's the activity point entity. This joins all the other activity entities together and contains the common fields across them all. Fields like subject, activity type, regarding, and due date. So if we don't have any fields that are specific to any type of activity, we can just use the activity pointer. If we do have fields that are specific to, say, a phone call or an appointment, we can just link those entities to the activity pointer entity. The basic data model for these entities looks something like this. OK, so now that we're in Power BI Desktop, we're just going to connect to CRM Online. We're just using a recent source that we set up in a previous blog. Once we've connected, we can obviously then pick the entities that we're interested in. And we're going to go ahead and pick the activity point entity that we just talked about. So we can also connect to other entity types, like the phone call entity, or appointments, or tasks. For now, we're not going to bring that data in. We just uh, really want to use the activity pointer. Uh, as we talked about before, when we talked about the regarding field, we can obviously link to accounts and leads and opportunities and things like that as well. The only other entity that we're going to need is the system users, so that we know who owns the activities that we're going to be reporting on. Okay, so once we've got those two tables selected, we're going to go ahead and load that data. Okay, so that has finished, and if we go ahead and click on the data view, we can see that it's got all the information in there for us, and we've got our two tables in there in our relationship view. Let's go ahead and click on the edit queries, and we can start to clean up some of this data because we don't need all these entities in here. So the best way to do that is to just deselect the columns, all the columns, and then just select the ones that we do need. So as we talked about before, owner is important, when it was created on, what status is it in right now, and we can just start to sort of go through and just really start with the basics, um, get rid of all the extra information that is just going to confuse and uh, make it harder to, to to look at the data and start reporting on it the way that we want. So we've got description there, subject, start, dates, and obviously we're going to, if we were linking via the regarding to accounts and contacts, we'd need those two fields there, the regarding object underscore account and underscore contact. And obviously the same again for leads and uh, opportunities as well, if that's something that we were looking at. 
So we'll just bring that data in, we'll keep that selected in case we want to do more reporting later on. So we've got our basic columns there for our activity enter. Okay, so that's removed all the superfluous columns that we don't need. And all we need to do now is, as you can see, the regarding fields, um, we just need to, again, select the ones that we really care about. And really, what we need right now is just uh, a pointer to the account entity. So that later, if we brought in the account entity, as we talked about at the beginning, we'd be able to link this activity to that entity. So we can do that again for contacts and opportunities and leads. Of course, if we wanted more information from the opportunity itself, uh, maybe we wanted to do some kind of filter on uh, opportunity type or something like that, then we wouldn't deselect all the fields. We'd uh, select opportunity ID that we are doing now and select those important fields from the opportunity that we'd want, like opportunity type. Um, but for now, we're just uh, keeping the ID. We can always go back and add more data in later. OK, so that's cleaned up our activity pointers. As you can see here, some activities there you go, are linked to appointments. And we can see that in there, so we know that's working correctly. We're going to do the same to the system users again. Easiest way I find is to deselect all the columns and then just select the columns that we care about. So again, ID and the full name of the system user so that we can just link this back to the activity table. Okay, so as I said, we can always go back in and add more if we want to later. So it's uh, nothing to really worry about that we don't have all the data first time around. We can go back and add first name and last name if we want. So we're happy with this. We're going to hit load the queries, and that's going to bring that data cleaned up into our Power BI desktop. So we can see all the fields that we selected that are important to us. So now we can just sort of create that relationship between the two entities that we've got. Um, I say if we had opportunity and account, we could create those relationships as well with those IDs. OK, so that's got activities and users in here. I find it's always nice to sort of rename the tables so that they make sense. So that's activities and then we've got users. And we can see all the columns in there. So full name obviously is going to give us the full name of all the users and then we can start putting the subject in there and because of the relationship that we set up in the relationship area, these two are already immediately related and we can start very quickly showing you know, account of all the activities by owner just by quickly adding two fields and then selecting to display the number. So we can see Alison Pahaka has 15, Art Small has 64. It's just very quick now that we've got our data in there and we've got the relationship set up. One thing we'll want to do is just look at some of these fields uh, have been automatically summarized. We won't want that. So as we just did there, it's just uh, turn off the summarization. And then we can add the status code in there as well and give us even more information on the chart. Or we could add it in as a filter and just say, you know, I only want to see active or scheduled or whatever it is, um, activities of that type. So if I hit zero, for example, it's only going to show me uh, open uh, activities. So if that was important for that, for these reports, then I would uh, add that filter in. Okay, so we talked about having uh, a view of activities by type so that we can see how many appointments have been done, how many tasks have been done. So if we use the activity type code field and throw that in there as a legend, we can start to look at the different types of activities for each person. So obviously Alison Parker there has done a lot more appointments than she has done uh, tasks or call reports. 
Okay, so one of the really nice things that we can do here is create a new column and add a little bit of DAX expression in here to create a regarding type. So what we're going to do is look at the different types of regarding fields on the activity. So if the account ID is blank, then let's take a look to see if it's a contact. And if that's blank, then let's take a look to see if it was a opportunity. So what we're doing here is basically working out, based on the data that's in the regarding field, you know, what the activity is regarding. Is it an account? Is it a contact? Is it an opportunity? Or is it a lead? And if it's not one of those, then we're going to sort of categorize that as other. So it's a very a very fairly simple DAX expression to just try and uh, denote in a chart very easily, okay, how many uh, activities has each person done for each major area of CRM, opportunities, leads, accounts, and contacts. So we can do that just by creating this new field called regarding type. Let's make sure we've got all the brackets in the right place there. And one more. Okay. Okay, so let's see how we can use this field now. So we're going to use our new regarding type. We're going to look at the count of activities by using the subject field. We're going to add our data label back in because that's always a nice way to be able to easily see uh, the number on the, for each bar. So we can see here that obviously most activities are regarding accounts um, and we don't actually have any regarding leads or contacts. Okay, so we can add a drill down as well. So we've just added another field of the actual subject just to see what you know where, what's going on here, what is this made up of. Um, we can actually see the activities if we add the subject and then use the drill down feature to sort of see more information about that. Um, and if we add the activity type code, uh, we can see what type of activities. So obviously there's a, a selecting other, we might want to then sort of see well where are what are all these other ones and they seem to be tasks or campaign responses and if we drill into the account one we can see that there's it's a, a makeup of all the different types mostly appointments okay so now we can start to add full name maybe that's interesting to us so we can see that Alison has a lot David Kohar has uh, about the same as Allison. Um, we can start digging into it this way. And if we choose a slightly different chart, then it makes it a little bit easier. So we can see that, well, okay, most of the data is in the accounts, regarding accounts. And we can sort of see here, Alison Parker and David Kohar have most, um, are doing most of the work around activities. Um, and Evan isn't too far behind. Okay, so now we want to add a little bit more information. So we've got the basics. We can, as we said, we can always go back and add more. And it starts small and build up. It, uh, it's a lot easier to do that way unless you really know what you're looking for. So let's go and add the account data into this and start drilling into what type of accounts we're talking about here. This seems to be what most of the activities are around. So we've connected to the account entity and pulled that in. Again, we're going to you know, clean up the columns in the same way that we did before. So we're going to choose our columns, deselect anything, all the columns, and then just select the ones that we, we really care about. So let's see. Um, name is always useful. Obviously, the owner. We need the account ID, obviously, to link it via the regarding field on the activity. Maybe we can start looking at certain things like relationship type or you know, territory, you know, what territory they're in, where are we seeing most of the activities happening. So 
So we'll add a few more of these different types of fields in. Okay, so that's cleaned up our accounts entity. And we'll apply that and let that load in. Okay, so we've got accounts now as, as well as our activities. So we can start to add more information, but of course, first of all, we'll want to um, create that relationship between them. Um, we've got the data there, we can see it. While we're here, we might as well just rename these fields so that they actually are more what we'd expect to see within CRM. So tier and relationship type. Okay, so now let's create those relationships. We'll see our new table pop in there and it's actually um, done that for us because it was labeled correctly and it could find the field that it was supposed to be related to. There it is. So it's done that correctly for us. We can always go in and just see what it's done uh, just to make sure that we're, we're happy with the way that it did that. But Okay, go back to the reports. Okay, so it might be interesting, uh, I think a lot of the times is sort of see, you know, are people concentrating on our tier one accounts, which is clearly what's happening, and maybe not putting enough effort into the rest of the accounts. <clears throat> Certainly the tier two accounts seem to be a little bit um, left behind here. And maybe that's something that we want to so take a look at and talk to our salespeople about, about re-engaging with our sales, uh, with our tier two accounts. So we can just have a look at the data in different ways. Again, uh, just do a quick pie chart here of the number of count of activities by tier, just to sort of see hey what's going on. So, and we can see it's uh, a sort of a percentage. So uh, a large percent of it there is tier one. Um, as we saw, it's about 41%. Okay, we can see that percentage quite easily as well, but just by hovering over. So 44.9% is tier one. So from all that, we can see very clearly some very interesting data around activities.